This video I wanted to talk about a gear, something we never really talk about uh, ever on our videos because I don't think it's important, but there are times when it can help. I just bought a new lens. I'm gonna tell you guys about it in just a second. This is when I think gear does matter. In a way, let us get up to our spots here, look for composition, and then we'll talk to you guys a little more about my new lens. guys the light is getting good we got a lot of color in the sky I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, buying this new lens here it's not new it's used what I've been shooting with you guys that have watched this channel know I shoot with the Nikon 14 to 24 f 2.8 it is a giant giant lens all oh, this color is getting so good <laughs> whenever people ask me if they should buy new gear what kind of camera should they buy or should they upgrade this and that I really only tell them if you're gonna upgrade do it because something breaks or because your gear is limiting you in some way, which is a hard question to answer. We have a lot of features and stuff in all these new cameras and stuff like that, but you know whether you should or shouldn't really depends on what kind of photography you shoot and if you're really truly held back by your gear. Now, I bought the Nikon 16 to 35 f4, and why I think that's an upgrade from the 14 to 24 is a couple of reasons. One, the manual focus broke on that lens on the 14 to 24. Autofocus works just fine, but manual focus won't do anything. When I got a hold of Nikon, they want uh, almost $700 US to uh, fix it. So it just so happened my buddy was uh, my buddy Jay. Shout out to Jay, who's got a YouTube channel. He had a lens he was selling, a 16 to 35 f4, and it's something I've been looking at for quite a while it was actually cheaper than what I wanted to re repair my 14 to 24 with so the reason why I went ahead and bought it was because it allows me to do a couple of things so that 16 to 35 range with the f4 is so much lighter so the weight difference between the 16 to 35 and the 14 to 24 is huge that's number one number two the focal range is different you know from 16 to 35 is, is quite a big difference from 24 to 35 is huge on the other end and the 16 and the 14 really the the difference between those two there is a bit but it's a matter of just maybe stepping back or, or raising up or whatever it is just a couple of inches you know six to eight inches or something like that so I don't think I'm gonna miss I do shoot at 14 occasionally but I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal but here's the biggest reason why that 16 to 35 is such a big deal for me because it goes up to that 35 millimeters that 50 millimeters I can carry a prime so instead of having that 24 to 70 f 2.8 Tamron that I've been carrying around I can get rid of that as well so now I've gotten rid of the 14 to 24 oh, with a big bulbous front end I've gotten rid of the 24 to 70 2.8 and I've replaced it with this very light 16 to 35 f4 and also I've used a 50 millimeter 1.8. You know, this little guy right here that weighs almost nothing. And so what I plan on doing is anytime I'm in between ranges, which those ranges I very rarely even shoot to begin with, but if I'm in between 35 and 50, I can do a couple of things. This is my absolute favorite pano lens. So when I shoot panos, I can always do 50, you know, if in between the, the 35 and 50, if it's smaller than 50, if I'm, you know, a little too tight, I can shoot uh, a panorama with a 50 millimeter lens. And then on the other side, same thing, either I can shoot a 50 and crop it because I shoot the Nikon D850, so I have a, a lot of room with the megapixels, or I can just take the 70 millimeter lens and shoot a pano with that as well. To me, it's such a huge deal. Going from a 14 to 24, down to the 16 to 35 and I say down because a lot of people see that as a downgrade optically that 14 to 24 is amazing you know it really is I don't have a problem with the 16 to 35 either you know I've uh, shot twice with it now in the last video you guys saw uh, where Chris and I did the wide angle challenge I actually had the 16 to 35 I'm gonna compare them because I do sell prints so I'm curious to see how this does edge to edge and, uh, and all that kind of stuff but I think it's gonna be fine I know a lot of people you know Michael Shane Bloom, one of my favorite photographers shoots with the 16 to 35 a lot and I believe even uh, at Adam Gibbs we used to shoot with it or he had the maybe he had the 24 to 105 but there's the, these f4 lenses that have these wide ranges optically aren't seen as good as like the 14 to 24 or any prime lens I'm really looking forward to seeing how it performs even though it's maybe a downgrade I really think it's an upgrade because it makes my carrying around all my lenses so much nicer and anything I might get after that is when my 70 to 200 2.8 breaks I'll probably get the f4 version of the same thing the Nikon 70 to 200 f4 because uh, 
that'll really make things really nice. You know, eventually I'd like to shoot the Z lenses. Uh, you know, my what I'm shooting on now is the Z6. I mean, I like it. It's awesome. The, the optically, the the lenses are amazing, and that's even lighter than what I'm shooting with now. But it's going to be a little ways away. Like I said I don't have any reason to switch now. The D850 is such a great camera. I just don't see myself going away from it anytime soon. It works perfectly fine. It does everything I need. It's a great landscape photography camera. We are here at my nemesis location. <laughs> Every time we're here, I'm struggling so hard to get a photo, but Mike loves it, so that's why we're here. I also think he's trying to sabotage me, because every time we're here, we're late for some reason. <laughs> but finally, I found something here. I busted up the uh, wide-angle lens this morning. I'm trying to get some interesting foreground with different cactus and then uh, one single saguaro in the, uh, the background, or as my main subject here. And I'm on my second composition already, the first one. I tried to work with a hedgehog cactus and now I'm working with a prickly pear cactus in the foreground and one saguaro in the background. And I have to do a focus stack, I think about 10 photos here, so everything is short from front to back. Just because the subject is very close to my lens, the, uh, the prickly pear cactus is very close. Well, I'm on my iPhone here because I have the Z6 running a time lapse right now and then I have my Where's my D850 shooting? I want to talk about my composition, I guess, while we're here. Talked enough about gear, and like I said, guys, I don't really... Chris and I both don't talk about gear on this channel too much because it's just... We don't find it the most important thing. You know, we're not gear reviewers either, and there's just people that do it better, and I just don't enjoy it that much. I don't find it to be overly important what brand you shoot or anything like that. Mine is more of... The, the art of it and the experience and the adventure and that's what we kind of try to do is just is that but um anyway so let's get back to the photography now what i'm looking at here let me put my video here so what you guys are seeing here on my camera is my composition i have a really cool a saguaro cactus in front of me that looks like on the left side it's like it's holding up a basketball like it's twirling a basketball like the harlem globetrotters so uh, <laughs> uh it's pretty cool so i'm looking at that right now and then i have this little baby saguaro in the foreground and i'm just using the top of the saguaros all that really cool texture of the the cactus thorns as a foreground element and i'm low enough to where the midground right now isn't very exciting at all it's really quite boring gotten down really low really close having a focus stack uh, not having the exposure blend right now so i ended up actually taking another shot it has some really cool clouds it almost looked like cumulus clouds so off to the left and right of this you can see let me zoom in a little bit more here put this same cactus uh same on the left side of my frame another vertical i've got these clouds i have some really nice light below that so the sun's starting to shine through and light up these clouds shooting this um just maybe moved over about 20 feet that's it just shot it from a different direction i'm not a big fan of that lower arm on the right side of the cactus it's hard to separate that from the bush behind it there's not a whole lot i can do about that from here though either way i like this shot a lot too because of those clouds in the sky one other thing too i wanted to mention is with the 14 to 24, you also get those giant, giant uh, filters to go with it. Those 150 millimeter filters that I carry around with me. Um, rarely, I don't ever really shoot filters unless I'm around water. That's still a weight savings of, of a lot because those filters are heavy. I was looking for more compositions, but couldn't really find anything. I guess the curse of Broadway Trail is still upon me. <laughs> I'm all packed up. Uh, it's time to go see how Chris did. She's always struggled in this place. This hike we've done so many times and she's never had a photo that she really likes. Hopefully today changed that.